Joined by the great Lennox Lewis, thank you so much for talking to us here at BT Sport. And big fight coming up between two undefeated British heavyweights, Daniel Dubois and Joe Joyce. It's for the British Commonwealth and vacant European titles. A lot on the line with this fight. As I said, they're both undefeated. I mean, what do you think of this matchup? I think it's a terrific fight. I mean, Dubois is a serious uh, uh, boxer. He comes in on a search and destroy. He's trying, to, <laughs> he's trying to knock you out. Most of the guys that he's fought against didn't really hold up. Uh, him, he's going against Joyce right now, and Joyce has a lot of experience. He's older and tough, and he knows that you know Dubois is going to be coming with that right hand. So he's you know he's not mm -hmm. silly. He's a smart fighter, and uh, he's gonna he's gonna have uh, his defense up and be watching out for that. Mm -hmm. So you know Dubois better come with something different, <laughs> uh, different combinations. And I think um, both fighters are are, are good and uh, it will be a good fight. Mm, there's been a lot of anticipation. They're saying, or they're calling it at last because it's been scheduled three times, had to be delayed because of COVID. It takes place November 28th in London. And it could be that the winner of this fight gets a title shot in the next 18 months. I mean, that's an exciting prospect for both of these, these guys. Yeah, they're on that level right now mm. where, uh, you know, 18 months is a good time for them to get a title shot. You know, in this sport of boxing, we, we have fights and we try and get um, as many fights and get as much experience as possible before stepping into that big fight and uh, both guys have uh, got a lot of experience had great fights and uh, it should be a, a barn burner well the last time we saw two highly touted British fighters go head to head like this was yourself and, and Gary Mason a fight you went on to win you were the underdog for that fight is that is that right and do you feel at the time, or do you remember thinking at the time that this is a fight that could catapult me or propel me to the next level? Oh, absolutely. You know, um, Gary Mason, great guy. Uh, I actually met Gary before, a uh, long time before we fought. He was actually a bus driver. Oh, is and, uh, you know, we were talking about Frank Bruno, and he was saying, oh, Frank Bruno doesn't want to fight me. I'm the street. Uh, you know, he's up there with uh, all the rich people. And, uh, I, you know, I was listening to him. And I was watching his career, and then, you know, Frank Bruno didn't want to fight him. And uh, suddenly, me and him were supposed to fight, and we fought. And it was, it was great actually fighting him because, you know, he was more the streets, and, you know, the street man usually says, oh, yeah, Gary Mason is the man right now. So if you, if you want to be the man, you got to beat Gary Mason. So I had to beat Gary Mason. That was a great fight. Do you remember the excitement and anticipation going into that fight? Yeah, I mean, when people were, people were saying to me, oh, it's a bit too early for uh, you, for me to, to box him, you know, he's got so much experience, he's a stronger and more filled out man. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, no, nah, no, nah, I can beat him. I'm, I've got the tools to beat him. I'm not going to sit there and punch him out with him. I'm going to box. So, you know, I boxed him and, and beat him. You got it done. Yeah. Would you say Joe Joyce is the underdog in this fight? I mean, it is Daniel that's got the British and the the uh, Commonwealth title? Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put him too much of as an as a underdog because, you know, he's been to the Olympics and, um, you know, he's got a lot, of, a lot of Olympic experience. And before you go to the Olympics, you've got to have that uh, training camp experience because, you know, uh, I'm sure he was training up in Sheffield and mm -hmm. uh, they've got everything up there for their Olympic team. So he was pre prepared well, so he knows how to prepare well mm -hmm. for fights. And uh, it should be an interesting fight. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the Olympics, actually, because I was going to say, you know, that amateur experience, he's, he's been 2016 Olympics silver medal. You yourself went to, to two Olympics. How important is it to have that amateur experience? Because Daniel has relatively less of it. He was catapulted into the, the professional ranks quite quickly. Right. So how, how vital is it to have that amateur experience? It is very vital mm. to have a great amateur background behind you. And if you get to the, go to the Olympics, it's, you know, even better. And uh, most uh, guys that go to the Olympics usually end up being, you know, world-class fighters, great fighters, champions. And, um, you know, Joy Joyce has that experience. So mm. he's going to bring that experience into this fight with him. Mm. How would you... Let's talk about their styles. Styles make fights. How would you describe their different styles? Well, um, Joy Joyce is more of a thinker boxer. You know, he... he um, he waits for the right opportunity, and he's, he moves. I, I like the way he moves. Uh, uh, when he was in the Olympics, I felt his head was a, a bit straight, and he wasn't moving his head that much, but now, obviously, he's, 
you know, gotten a lot better and he's moving his head a little bit and he's fainting a lot. And uh, uh, as far as Dubois, he's, uh, you know, he's search and destroy, search he's and destroy. He, yeah, he's just trying to take you out. He doesn't have time for, uh, you know, to, 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 to waste any time. He's just on a mission. When you talk about someone having that, that power, that ability to knock somebody out just like this, there must be a certain amount of confidence that comes with that when you can go into a fight and know that you can end it at any time. Yeah, the only problem with that is, um, you know, when you feel that within yourself, you, 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 f you have nothing to slow you down, nothing to, in, uh, to stop you from saying to yourself, oh, oh, maybe I should watch out for this. No, you feel so f confident and focused that you, you, you have the knockout power, that that's what you're going to do. The only thing that can stop you is when somebody hits you and stops you in your tracks. And that's happened to me a couple of times. <laughs> so, it's like, you know, I gave you the analogy of like driving a car. Mm. You drive a car and you get in a, a fender bender. <laughs> a what? And a fender bender. <laughs> I'm gonna use that one. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's a, it's a bit of a shock for you and you don't want that to happen again. So next time you go on the road, it's like, okay, you're defensive driving and you don't want to get hit and you're careful and you're, you're, you're a little bit more uh, um, careful with tentative, your actions. Yeah. Tended, yeah, tentative with your actions mm -hmm. and uh, that slows you down a bit. So, um, so you're Dubois, saying if that happens to him at any point, like, yeah. how will he respond? Dubois has that. He doesn't have that. He hasn't gotten a fender bender yet. So he doesn't want to slow down. Mm. Now, for me, I got an offender bender a couple of times, <laughs> twice in my career. And, um, you know, that made me say to myself, what mistake did I make? And mm. make sure I don't make that mistake again. Mm. So. So if you're that type of fighter, like we said, you can sort of knock people in, out at any time. Is it important to have a plan B? You know, we saw it with Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury in the first fight. When he knocked him down in the 12th, when he got back up again, and we could talk about that for days, um, it was like he didn't really know what that plan B was. You know, he didn't go down. So do you feel like if you're that type of fighter, you, you need to have some kind of plan B? Well, before you go into a fight, you're supposed to have a plan A, B, and C uh, when, when you go into a fight, because what you think that you're going to expect, something mm -hmm. else may come about and that you don't expect, that you have to, you know, all of a sudden react to. Like, for instance, you know, I went in a fight with Evander Holyfield and I, I thought we were going to, you know, be boxing, but he was boxing and using his head. So it's like I was boxing, blocking his punches and blocking his head. <laughs> so in that fight, I actually got better because I had another opponent um, with another uh, weapon using against me. So he was using his head against me. So I was blocking his punches and blocking his head. Mm. And how important is the speed factor going to be? Dubois, I mean, lightning fast. You could say um, Joyce is a little more pedestrian in, in some ways, but he's big. He's you know, built like a refrigerator. But the speed that Daniel has, um, that speed versus size factor, I mean, how does that play out? Well, I, I love speed more mm. than size. If, you got, if you're fast mm. and you can move well, you know, you're not going to get hit. And it's going to be difficult for your opponent to hit you. So um, speed factor always is a, is a point in a fight. Now, one thing to mention is this fight's going to take place behind closed doors. There'll be no fans. You know, you're used to walking out, you know, Wembley when you fought Mason, you know, screaming fans, that noise, etc. That's going to be missing. Like, how much does that drive you on? How much as a fighter do you need to hear that to get you riled up and ready to go? Yeah, you need a crowd. I mean, you know, I commentate in a building where there's no crowd and... You know, I'm commentating and uh, I'm, I'm seeing the fighters. The fighters are actually listening to me. <laughs> so, so it's... it's careful it, what you say. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be careful what I say. And, um, you know, it's, um, it's one of those things. It's like a high... It's like a sparring session. It's like, let's get our clothes on. We're going to go to another gym and spar this good guy. And that's, yeah. that's what it is. It's going to be like a sparring <laughs> session, but a fight. It's a but real can fight. Can you get us worked up? Yeah, you can get wor you can get worked up because it's 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 one person against another, so, and it's one team against another team. So you know whichever team's the strongest will win. I like actually having watched some fights without a crowd myself as well. That you hear the co the coaches, the trainers, you hear the commentators more. You know you hear all of those sounds, and I think you almost learn a little bit more sometimes about the fight than you would do if it was being drowned out by that surrounding noise. 
Mm. I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, people get encouraged, encouraged by a crowd. You know, when, the, when they hear the crowd yelling and screaming, it's like it gives them more energy. You know what? You fought at the Royal Albert Hall a couple of times as well. What was it like fighting in that grand old arena? Oh, Royal Albert Hall was a, a great, great arena. And uh, I liked it because it was an intimate setting. Mm. And uh, intimate settings bring, you know, your family type of thing, your crowd. And uh, the only thing, uh, my opponent had his crowd too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, either way, even without a crowd, um, Joe Joyce, Daniel Dubois will face off. The winner, could the next opportunity for the winner be a title shot? Uh, I don't know about uh, it being a title shot. I mean, to, to me, in order to get a title shot, you've got to prove yourself. And uh, people have to see that you deserve that chance. And people have to see that you, and they want to see it. They want to see you in a title shot and that you deserve one. It will elevate the winner regardless. But oh, yeah. for the loser, this is a risky fight. You know, someone's always got to go. They're both putting that on the line here. It's like a game of snakes and ladders. You know, you climb up that ladder and then, you know, with one loss, you find yourself down at the bottom. Where does the loser go from here? How do they rebound physically, mentally, um, and, and take that path back to, to being in contention again? Well, you know, once you lose, you, 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 you have to, it depends on how you handle the loss. So if you handle a loss as in, oh, that's it, man, I don't know what I'm going to do type of thing, or you handle the loss as, no, I'm going to come back and, and, or I'll face him down the road. I, now I know what I need to do. I'll see you in a year and a half. And, you know, it depends on what your mindset is. Yeah. Well, you proved your mindset during your career. You always came back and, you know, with the very few losses you had, you came back and you righted those. Oh, absolutely, those absolutely. Yeah, we're going to see the mindset play out for sure. So I'm not going to ask you to make a prediction. I'm just going to say, what do you think we can look forward to between this fight between Daniel Dubois and Joe Joyce? Well, at first you're going to see, like, a tentative mm -hmm. fight because they have to get used to each other. Mm -hmm. And then you're going, to, you're going to be on the edge of your seat wondering, <laughs> you know, who's going to land the first big shot. You know, obviously everybody's looking for Daniel Dubois to, to, to land the big shot, but uh, they may be surprised. He may come out with a hook or an uppercut. You never know what, what, what comes in a fight. Let's talk about heavyweight greats. Mike Tyson, at age 54, is coming back. He's fighting Roy Jones Jr. It's an exhibition fight, November 28th, here in LA at the Staples Center. Eight rounds, two minutes, each round, and they'll be wearing 12-ounce gloves. I just want to ask, what was your reaction when you first heard that this fight was announced? I was, um, I was saying, really? You know, Mike Tyson's <laughs> going to step back in the ring, and he's going against Roy Jones? Interesting. I thought it was an interest, interesting uh, fight. I mean, they're doing it for charity. I think that's a good thing. And uh, I didn't feel that, you know, we would ever see Mike Tyson back in the ring. You know, I thought he was very happy doing his uh, different businesses around the world being a movie star, mm -hmm. but to come back in the ring and fight, you know, uh, everybody loves Mike Tyson, everybody loves Roy Jones, and, uh, you know, they, they just want to see him in the ring again, mm -hmm. you know, so it's not a bad thing, and, and uh, you know, at his age, I think it's good that the fact that he wants to, he can actually push himself to actually step back in the ring. And we've seen his training videos, I mean, he's certainly got himself in shape, but it's an exhibition fight, but Freddie Roach came out recently and said, there's no way Mike Tyson's going to treat this as an exhibition fight. He's going to go out from, you know, the first round and, and want to win this thing. And I think they both said in the press conference that they're, they're treating this like a, a real fight. I mean, what do you think of that? Do you think they can go out and, and essentially spar each other for an exhibition, or do you think they're coming for each other's heads? Well, you know, you have to, you have to remember how Roy Jones is. Roy Jones is one of the quickest fighters out there. Uh, and when he was fighting, and he moves around the ring, he's not going to be an easy target. Um, quick as, you know, Roy Jones was in the Olympics with me. He was the fight before me in the Olympics, oh, no. <laughs> where uh, I think the Korean didn't want to step out of the ring. So I had to wait because the Korean fighter didn't want to leave the ring. So I, I remember him from way back then. So I know he's quick, mm -hmm. and this type of fight, he's not looking to get hit, and I'm sure it's going to be a big ring. So until Mike Tyson catches up with him, you know, it, um, if he can catch up with him, yeah. we're going to see a good fight. Okay. Would you be able to do an exhibition fight? And I'll, I'll put it this way first. As an athlete, as a fighter, you're tuned to win. Every time you step in there and that competitive edge takes over, you're there to win. So could you see yourself doing more of an exhibition-style fight yourself? 
Um, it's, you know, that's an interesting question. You know why? <laughs> because a lot of people um, say they're going to do an exhibition until they get hit. And then, you know, it's a thing with athletes. It's like, who got, who got that last hit? Who got, who got uh, the best over uh, the other person? So it's like that. If, you know, if Roy Jones hits Mike Tyson a couple of times and then runs around, you know, Mike Tyson's not going to sit there and say, <laughs> oh, this is an exhibition. No, the Mike, crowd enjoying Mike this. Tyson's going to say, I got to get you back. I got to hit you a couple of times, maybe three times. So it's like that. Yeah. So you'd feel the same. Yeah. Yeah. Does this tempt you? Do you want to come out and fight again um, any point? No, it doesn't really tempt me. I mean, you know, there, there is talk of, of uh, that type of thing mm. in the future maybe, but uh, not now. Okay. And they've put this, um, WDBC have created a belt for this event, the Frontline Battle Belt. Both have said that the idea of a belt actually gets them quite excited. You know, do you, do you feel the same? Do you think yeah, when there's an actual belt? Of course. There's got, got to be something on the line. Why box for nothing? Yeah. You know, you. We, we box for belts, we box for glory, mm. we box for titles. Well, I'm excited to see this one. Let's talk about Tyson Fury, Mike Tyson's namesake. You were there ringside for his first and second fight against Dante Wilder. I was there the first time myself. Um, after everything that Tyson Fury, the Gypsy King, had been through with, with depression, speaking openly about you know, the mental struggles he came, came through, and then in that first fight, were you surprised how well he did? against Deontay Wilder. Yes, it was, I was very surprised how well he did because, you know, coming back from uh, all those mental problems that haunted him, I was really surprised. I didn't think he was mentally ready for the fight, but he thought he was re mental for the, uh, mentally ready mm. for the fight. And then we've got to talk about the 12th round. Uh, when he went down, he was down, he appeared to be out, and then, I mean, we're going to talk about this forever, the way he rose up and came back into that fight. What was going through your mind at that moment that that Fury got up off the canvas. At that moment, Fury got up. I was thinking what everybody else was thinking, that the fight was over. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised that the, the referee was actually counting because of the way he landed. And then when he rose up and came back and he was like, yo, you know, he was <laughs> a lot more energetic even after that because he went after Deontay. I was like, okay. Yeah. So for the second fight that when they fought, you know, obviously, he um, got a new trainer. Yeah. He brought in the Kronk method. Yeah. And uh, that was very wise of him. He uh, decided on a place in Vegas to train, got his whole team there, so he was focused. So, uh, you know, the first fight, he went through the mental problems. Yeah. The second fight, he's resolved them and he's focused on winning the fight. So that's how I seen the second fight. He was very well prepared mm -hmm. mentally and physically. And then in that second fight, he'd said from the beginning that he was going to come forward. He wasn't going to be that Tyson Fury that infuriates and frustrates his opponents. He came forward, he did exactly what he said he was going to do. It was a very bizarre series of events. At first, Wilder, in that second fight, blamed the weight of his walkout suit. And now more recently, he's saying that his water was tampered with by his, his own trainer, as well as the fact Tyson Fury, he said, had egg weights or some kind of loaded gloves. When you hear that, and you already said that's kind of a, a bizarre thing um, for someone to come out and say, but what goes through your mind when you hear those kind of excuses from someone, you know, at that level? You know, I think of myself, and I said, you know, I never made no excuses. There, there could have been a lot of excuses that I could have made. I kept them to myself. There was a lot of different reasons that different things happened. Kept to myself, kept on chugging along until the time for me to prove myself again. Mentally, even after I lost, I left the ring knowing that I lost and it was my mistake and knowing how to fix it. Yeah. Well, against McCall and, and Rackman, you went away. Right. You, you dealt with that and, I, and you came back and you, you, like you say, you fixed it, you, you corrected it. Right. To me, I look at it like falling off a horse. You know, when you fall yeah. off a horse, it's like, ah, oh, do I get back on the horse? Yes, I get back mm -hmm. on the horse and this time I'm going to ride it. Do you think Wilder's damaging his reputation a little bit here? I think, uh, you know, we really have to look into what he's been saying. Uh, I don't see his teammates or his, uh, anybody saying anything. He's the one that's really making all these accusations. So we've got to, you know, talk to him and see what's really on, on his mind and see what's in his head. Well, it looks like we're going to see Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua in the spring of next year. Uh, that's exciting. I think it's not only the fight that fans want, but they've kind of demanded, right? Yeah, you know, they, they want to see an undisputed champion. They want to see Tyson Fury and, and Anthony um, 
fight. Mm. I think it's going to be uh, a, a great fight. Uh, both are great athletes, and um, you know everybody's looking for a, a, a major fight like that. And you know there's a lot of people that think Anthony Joshua uh, is going to be the champion. A lot of people think that Tyson Fury is going to be the champion. Right now, you know Tyson Fury is number one to me. A lot of people saying that you know Tyson Fury could potentially be one of the best heavyweights of all time. What do you, what do you think of that statement? I think that Tyson Fury is a, a great heavyweight. The fact that he's a switch hitter, you, you don't really see that in, in heavyweight boxing. And that's, you know, he can box uh, southpaw and he can box orthodox. He can move well, his boxing IQ is, is high and uh, he's a very smart individual. So, you know, I, I expect uh, big things in the future. Mm. I think the heavyweight division right now is, is exciting again. You know, I feel like this breed of heavyweight fighters right now is, is kind of recapturing some of the you know, your era and so forth. Do you, do you feel that the landscape of the heavyweight division is in a good place at the moment? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I just love the fact that, you know, the heavyweight uh, landscape is in, is in Britain right now. Yes. So that's, I'm very happy about that. I'm glad you said that. I was just going to say Britain are kind of ruling the waves right now with, yeah. with Joshua, with Fury, with the young... Dubois and then Joyce and then although they're coming off a loss, Dylan White and, and Derek Chisora, um, it's going to sit within Britain. I think the yeah. you know the, the future champions, the current champions. I think it's it's going to be that British wave, right? Yeah, it's the British wave right now, and I'm very glad that it's happening, yeah. and it, it's it's great for for Britain. And uh, right now, the focus is on Britain for boxing yeah. in every weight class. Mm. Who do you think wants it the most? Who do I think wants it wants the most? Wants it the most, yeah. I think Tyson Fury wants it the most. You know, it's, it's, I've spoken to him, he's a serious guy. Okay. He wants it the most, you know, you know what's on his head. And a fun one to finish. If you could spend some time in the gym with any of these fighters, who would it be? Probably the young kids, okay. you know, the young kids. I love giving information to young, open-minded boxers. Um, I feel that I've got so much in my head to tell them and give them because I can't take it away with me. And talking of the young kids, if Daniel Dubois gets through Joe Joyce, do you think he could be the next superstar? Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Both guys are making the steps towards that now, and I think that's their focus for the future. Then it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you.